Well, hallelujah. I, I, okay, I tell you what, we just got to jump right on in. This, this is too important to, to lollygag and goof off with this. We talk about predestination 101. We're talking about what God has planned for you and I, and especially in these last of the last days. You say, when did the last days begin? According to the book of Hebrews chapter one, the last days began when Jesus was born into the earth. When Jesus came speaking the word of God, that was the sign of the ages that the last days has begun. And, and you know what's going on with these last days. We've been 2000 years of last days. Now we, we ain't on our own clock. We got to get on God's clock. We got to get on God's time frame, God's page, God's revelation. By the way, tonight, if you're going to really grab a hold to the power of predestination and the formula of predestination and how to walk in life fearless, worryless, depressionless, stressless, you and I are going to have to accept some things that God has said, like, for example, all things work together for the good to them that are called according to his purpose. That's you and me. And we got to renew our mind. Let me just say this here. We have to renew our mind and start thinking like God thinks. We got to renew our mind to the word of God. And we literally not only have to start thinking like God, but we want to grow that, start talking like God. We want to start, you know what I mean? Expecting from God. And then we want to start, you know what I mean? Changing our behavior, our physical circumstances to line up with the very thoughts and the mind of God. I'm reminded of what Paul said, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. You know the rest of that verse, who thought it not robbery to be called equal to God. Hey, you know what I mean? You and me, we, we got to realize that, that we have equity with God, that we have rights with God, and these have been purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. So this is not in our own righteousness, but it's in the righteousness that's been provided for us through the Lord Jesus Christ. We renew in our mind. You renew in your mind, I'm renewing my mind. Yeah, 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 I said it. You thinking more like God than you've ever thought like God ever in your life. You're talking more like God than you've ever talked like God ever before in your life. You doing more for God and obeying God more than you've ever obeyed God ever in your life. Yeah, I said it because God said it. And I'm telling you what that means is, is that you are dialed in and locked in to the predestined will of God for your life. And I'm telling you right now, the predestined will of God for your life is amazing. That's why we got to study these scriptures and renew our mind. We got to literally say, okay, you know, if it don't line up with the word of God, then it ain't lined up with us. We ain't in agreement with it. And you know, the book of Isaiah says, whose report will you believe? See, once you find out what the report says, what God's report says, then you and I, we got to make a choice to renew our mind, to accept what God says God's going to do. And the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, now they don't put some lofty promises out there, but God has answered every promise that God has made. I'm talking about Elohim right now. The Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, every promise they've uttered that was to be fulfilled in time has been answered in eternity. And the ones in time that have become physical reality, well, if I was going to put it on a percentage basis, all the prophetic words that God has spoken, okay, all the prophetic words, okay, like 90 some some percent has already come to reality. And I'm going to tell you right now, I don't, want to, I don't want to just keep chiming in on this here, but you and I ought to be really, really, really excited right now. We, 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 we growing our faith. We renewing our mind. We're seeing more prayers get answered in the name of Jesus. It's like God is just answering prayers. And why? Because all things work together for the good to them that are called according to the purpose of God. That's you and me. And then not only that, not only that. We grow in our faith to a level that is triggering the power of God to move in our physical circumstances and situation. Yeah. So for that, listen, knowing those promises, we're not afraid no more. We're not depressed no more. 
Oh, hallelujah. Then you know the attacks come, but we defeating every attack of the devil that's coming against us. You are defeating every attack of the devil that's coming against you because you're getting closer to God. You're believing what God says. And not only are you believing what God says and thinking like God and talking like God more and more, you're expecting God to do what God has promised. So I'm saying right now, okay? If, if in your situation, you don't know the promises of God for your situation, you need to get on the phone. I mean, if you don't Google, if you went to Google and you typed in your situation and you just typed in what has the Bible said about this, if nothing comes up, get on the phone, call somebody that's been walking this thing and knows more than you. That's what I do. I come across something that I come across a situation or a scenario where the devil done turned up the power and turned up the attack intensity. Um, if I can't go get it offline, if I don't know it from the years of study and renewing my mind, I'm going to call somebody that I think knows. Hey, hey, hey. got to be humble to do that, though. You know what I'm saying? And once we get the promise of God, once we get the mind of God, once we get God's thoughts, and God's will and desire in any given situation, that's when we lock in and say, I understand that this promise was predetermined. It was already in the knowledge of God. It was already prepared for me. This is what you got to say to yourself. You got to say this to your circumstance. I will not end up in defeat. I will not end up in ruin. I am destined to have all things work together for my good. That's, that's what you got to say to your situation. Sometimes you got to say that to yourself. And at all times, you got to say that to the devil. You got to tell that devil, all things are working together for me. All this, this nonsense that you're throwing up against me, these, these distractions, all of this here, waste of time. None of this stuff is going to take me down. I'm connected to Jesus. I'm connected to the Father God. I'm connected to the Holy Spirit. I'm predetermined by God to manifest the image of Jesus Christ. This is what you and I got to start saying in our situations, in the midst of our situations. And when we do that and we release our faith and say to God through praise and worship, God, thank you. This thing looks a mess in the natural. And it is a mess in the physical, natural realm that we live in in this time frame. It's a mess. But God, you live outside of time. And you know the beginning and the end. You know all of the steps. You know everything that's going on in the processes because you're looking ahead through prognosis. God, it's in your hand. Now, just, God, just go ahead and be God in my life. Just lead me and guide me. I'm not going to worry about the next step. When I get there, you're going to manifest the instructions at that next step. So I say this here to you, beloved. Keep moving. Don't take no doubt breaks. Don't take no depression detours. Don't take no fear excursions. Keep walking straight, following the instructions of Almighty God and keep your faith strong. Keep confessing that word. Renew your mind to the word of God. All right, all right, all right. That's enough, that's enough. You know, I just tried to you drop some seeds on you, get you ready for what we about to get into. Let's do this here. Quick word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, open our understanding, open our minds, Lord God. We're not afraid to have you give us revelation of, of, of the magnificence of your power, the magnificence of your glory. And then, Lord God, the formula of how to manifest the image of Jesus Christ in every area of our lives. We thank you right now for kingdom protocol and operation. We thank you right now that in the midst of every situation, every scenario, our mind is firm, our heart is fixed. All things are working together for our good, Lord God, and we have peace in that because you are the one working it for our good. And we thank you right now. With all of the humility that we can manifest, we humble ourselves before you, and we thank you for your goodness that you've already done in our lives. We just celebrate you, oh God. We celebrate you, Father. We celebrate you, Lord Jesus. We celebrate you, Holy Spirit, and we thank you right now. We love your word. We love you, oh God, and we love watching you work. These things, oh God, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we just simply say amen, amen, and amen. Now, I want to go right to Romans chapter eight. Now you can segue from a, just write this in your notes, Romans chapter 12, be ye transformed. You undergoing the transformation process of God. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind to the word of God. 
Do not be conformed to this world. Don't, don't, don't act like the world. Don't listen to all of the craziness that's going on in the world and let it shake your faith and shake your foundations. No. But you, you are not to be conformed to this world, but you are to be transformed by the renewing of your mind to the will of God, to the image of God. That's what we're doing. That's where we're at right now. We are in the process of transforming our thinking. So now when the world is saying, doom, 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 we're saying dominion, dominion, dominion in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You know what I mean? That, that devil, he's just running his mouth and running all this rhetoric. He got all these people believing all this craziness. Afraid, scared, worried. Not you, not us. We know the next major spiritual event that's going to come from the instruction and the direction of Almighty God. It's the Feast of Trumpets. It's the rapture. The rapture is going to take place. That's why right now, renew your mind, get busy, and share the word of God with your neighbors, your friends, your enemies, your family, your co-workers. You know what I mean? You got to put it on them now. Don't be scared. Just put the word on them. Just do it in love. All right. Let them know that this, let them know that when you start talking to them, that that was a preordained moment that God knew that the conversations would go down and that the word of God would come forth. All right, let, let's go, let's read, let's read. Romans chapter eight, verse 24. Look at this here. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Yeah, we are doing some cheerful enduring right now. Likewise, the spirit, also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we are, but the spirit himself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Man, you got a helper, you got a friend. We got a friend. Hey, we got a shepherd and we got a Holy Ghost. <laughs> you know, I was watching the Avengers and you know what I mean? And they was going up against, you know what I mean? The enemy and these aliens coming from outer space. This is, this is you know, comic and, 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 and you know, it ain't real. But they was like, oh, they got it this and they got it that. But then they said, but we got a halt. Hey, hey, I ain't talking now. Watch this. I ain't talking Avengers right now. And I'm not, I'm not talking comics and I'm not talking, you know what I mean, science fiction right now. I'm talking spiritual, supernatural intervention by God. We got a Holy Spirit. We got a shepherd. We got a Holy Spirit. And we got a God the Father. And I'm telling they all for us and not against us. And they are working all things out for our good because we believe, because we are the called according to their purpose. And we learn in their purpose. I don't know about you. I've been, I've been learning the purpose of God and I don't know it all, but what I've learned about the purpose of God, I'm submitting to it all. I love it all. I know you do the same thing. We, hey, we mono, we mono. Yeah, because we the head, not the tail. And I'm telling you right now, you speak from your renewed mind in Jesus name and from the book, from the Bible. And you, you break it down, you know what I mean? So that it's nice and simple and people can understand it. And the Holy Ghost can illuminate it in the minds of the people that you are talking to, but in you first, next thing you know, revival done broke out. Yeah, living in a constant state of revival. That's you, that's me. Uh, you say, how do we increase the intensity of that revival? Stop where you are. Just give God some praise. Just start thanking God. Just say, Lord, I, I just want to thank you right now. I want to thank you, Lord God, for what you've been doing and what you are doing. I want to thank you for what you got planned. I want to thank you for your preordained will for me. And I want to thank you, oh God, for, for helping me to conform to the image of Jesus Christ. And God says, look, you more than a conqueror when you when you thinking like that. You more than a conqueror when you talking like that. God says, you set, because of that kind of faith, you set in heaven's power. You set in my power. Loose in your situation. So find out the promise, speak that promise, and remind God, God, I'm speaking what you've already said and decreed and have already made reality in eternity, and I'm speaking it in time, and I thank you, God, for moving in time and bringing everything that I've prayed according to your word, which is your will, to my reality. Hey, you undergoing change. I'm undergoing change. We undergoing change. The world is changing for the worse. We change it for the better. We got a Holy Ghost. If you don't like Holy Ghost, we got a Holy Spirit. And our Holy Spirit, man, listen, 
he was the one that when 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 the father said, hmm, I want to do this, and the Lord Jesus said, You you want to do that? And, and you know, I'm just paraphrasing, right? And 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 and, and the, the father said, Yeah. Then the Lord just spoke what the father was thinking. Jesus, wow, this is good. Jesus spoke what was in the mind of God, what was in the heart of God. And every promise that you can find is the mind and the heart of God for your life. It's for your future. It's for your now. Back in the beginning, you know what I mean? When stuff was void and vo formed, was void and darkness and water covered the face of the earth, the father was like, hmm, trees. He just thought it. The Lord Jesus took that thought and spoke it. And then the Holy Ghost, oh man, I love the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost heard exactly what Jesus said. And when he heard what Jesus spoke, the Holy Ghost released the power to bring it to reality. Now, let me just tell you, so I just gave you the formula right there. You ought to be shouting hallelujah right now. You want to know how to change your circumstance and change your situation. And you want to how to do Holy Ghost predictive uh, uh, prophetic speaking and prophetic reality, prophetic programming. Find out the promise of God and do like the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost did at the beginning. In the beginning, Elohim, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost said, let there be light. In other words, the Father thought it. Uh. The Lord Jesus spoke it. Uh. And then the Holy Spirit made it physical reality. That's how this thing works. That's why when you find the promise of God, that's why it's so important to find the promise of God. That's why the devil don't want us reading the Bible. He don't want us listening to the Bible. He don't want us listening to preaching like this, especially, especially the way I'm kicking it because I'm kicking formula, process, outcome. We find the formulas of God. I know there's some part of, oh, there's no formulas. No, shut up. There is formulas in the, in, the, in, the, in the word of God. Jesus did everything decently in order and you look at his life, his life is the formula. And he approached every process that the devil could throw at him to bring him to defeat, and he crushed them all. And we have the same words that Jesus spoke, and we have the same authority to speak in Jesus' name because he gave us that authority in his name. Now, we don't have all the words that Jesus spoke, but we got enough to know salvation and defeating the devil. Everything that's in the book, we can do, but you got to believe it. So here the father, the father has this thought in the mind of the father God and in the heart of the father God, the father God, he just like, he's just thinking of stuff. Jesus, Jesus is so connected. He heard the thought, he spoke it. And when Jesus spoke the thought, the Holy Spirit performed the thought. That's why we got to renew our mind. We got to start thinking like God. The only way that you and I can start thinking like God, we got to go into the Bible and we got to go into the Bible and look at all of the promises and look at the predestination that God has spoken over humanity. And we are predetermined to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. That means whatever you read in your Bible about Jesus Christ, whatever it is, except for going and dying on the cross, you can do the same thing and greater stuff. God says, if you'll grow your faith, and really, really start working your faith and treating your faith like what it is, a tool of massive destruction to the devil's kingdom. That's exactly what faith is. That's exactly what the word of God is. And we got to start taking this word more serious. We got to start taking this word and, and, and believing this word like it's life-saving, not just life-changing, life-saving, life-producing, life-advancing. That's what's happening to you right now. You're being conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. I'm being conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. Every time I hear this word and I say to God, God, your will be done. Not my will be done. Your will be done. That's the formula. That, but Jesus dropped that in one of the most challenging situations that he ever faced. And he's saying, this is how you do it. And when he did it, go read that in, the, in, in, in Matthew. Read it in Luke. When he did that, when he said, not my will be done, thy will be done, he was facing some serious pressure from the devil. He was, he was facing some serious attack from the devil to quit and give up in the middle of the process. But because he said, not my will be done, thy will be done, all of a sudden, Satan, you didn't hear another peep out of Satan. 
I'll tell you right now, it's something about willingness and obedience that smacks him all the way around. It smacks him all the way around and it crushes him down to the ground. And he becomes the tail, you become the head. And notice in this story with Jesus, when he said that prayer to the father, he said, not my will be done. Now Jesus was like, is there another way we can get this done? It was no other way. He said, not my will, but thy be done. Then all of a sudden, read the next verse. And the angels of God began to strengthen him and minister to him. That's what's waiting for you and I. When we say to God, not our will be done, thy will be done, look for the strength of God to come and strengthen you to fulfill the next step and the rest of the steps. Or you know that's an amen moment. You know that's a hallelujah moment. But you and I got to make the choice to apply the formula of Jesus Christ to our circumstances and situations. And like I said, if you don't know what God has said about your situation, you better go on the phone and call somebody. You better ask somebody that you think no. And then don't just say, hey, what, what, what should I do in this situation? I'm facing this, this, and this. Now you make sure, you, give me some chapter and verse. Give, give me some Greek and Hebrew. I don't want, I don't want, I don't want what you thinking and what you know. I want what God says. All right, so look at this here. Let, let me move on here. <clears throat> Verse 27, Romans chapter 8. And he that searches the hearts knoweth what is, <clears throat> excuse me, knoweth, knoweth what is the mind of the spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that are that love God to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate. Look, he predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. In other words, what you saw Jesus do, God says, I'm challenging and I'm changing. And I am now, I am now conforming you to the image of Jesus. You say, what is God doing with me? What, God, what's, what are you doing with my life? Here's the answer. I am conforming you to the image of Jesus Christ. What do you mean the image? We talked about iconization last time. You know what I mean? Because the Hebrew, the Greek word is icon, iconic. So, so, so literally it's where we get the word icon from. So you and I are becoming icons of Jesus Christ. God is training us in every area that we'll allow God to train us in. Every area that you allow God to train you in, I don't care what it is. God says, I will train you to do it like Jesus would do it, like Jesus did do it. That's why we got to jump all over Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And we got to go in there, not with a, a, a thought process, a mindset, is this really real? Like, this is real. We got to go in there with a brand new mindset. We got to go in there with a mindset that says, God, show me how you did it. First of all, God, show me what you did. And then when you read them stories, look at the formula that Jesus utilized to get the results that God promised that he would have. And let me just say this here. God said to Jesus, I, I'm, I'm with you. Jesus said, the father is with me always. I, the father never leaves me. And God is saying to you right now, I don't care what you're dealing with, what you're going through, mountaintop experience, middle of the mountain, in the valley. God says, I'm with you. And I'm with you to teach you the formulas, man, woman. I'm here to teach you the formulas, child of God. And God is teaching us the formulas and we renewing our mind to the will of God. And we literally starting to talk different. We're thinking different first. We're thinking with possibility and faith. We're like, wait a minute, this, this is not impossible. This is, this, is, this is possible with God. Where everybody else is off, they, they freaking out and going bananas. Not you, you like, oh man, you slow and steady. You like, no, 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 no. Look, you don't understand something. I've been thinking on some different things. I've been thinking on some different outcomes. I've been thinking on some different ways to handle this situation. Watch this here. Let me just say this here because the Holy Ghost said, throw this at you. Before you go jumping into your situation, you need to go jump into your prayer closet and talk to God first. You, you, in, you, you in a situation where people want a direct answer from you immediately, you need to say, hold on, give me, give me, about, give me, give me a couple of minutes. I'll be right back. Don't go away. No, no, no. Don't go away. You stay right there. Stay right there. When I come back, I'm going to have something for you. All right? When I come back, I'm gonna make, I just need a minute. You go away, simple prayer, Father, in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, I think I, I need you to take control of this situation. I need you to work this thing out for my good so that I can give you praise and glory and honor so I can tell them that, that whether they meant for my good or my bad, what they meant for bad, you can turn into good. 
God, I just want a testimony. I want to glorify you. I want to witness for you. And I thank you right now. I'm going to go back in here and I thank you for touching their hearts, touching the hearts of everything, every mechanism in this whole process, that it'll work out for my good. And I thank you for that right now in Jesus name. You come back. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You give some praise to God. You go back in there. Now you go in there and talk to these people about the decision you about to make. And that's the formula. And I just gave you some good formula right there. You should be sharing, shouting hallelujah. And you need to listen to this a couple of times and then share this with your friends. Now watch this here. Verse 29 again. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. This is what predestination is all about. This is the hub of predestination. This is the very outcome of predestination. I don't care where you are, what you're doing, how long you've been there. I don't care how much victory you got. God says, all the victory you already have, don't even move the needle good when it comes to what I'm about to do and what I've got to continue to do to cause you to manifest the image of Jesus Christ through everything that you do. Look at this. Look at verse 30. Watch this here. He says, he says I'm conforming you to manifest the image, to, to literally breathe out represent out, manifest out the very image of Jesus Christ. He says, moreover, whom he did predestinate, then he also called. Talking about you right now, you called. Is anybody going to say anything about you? Make sure you tell them that I'm called by God. And I'm in the process. And I'm at work right now. All right? And God's at work in me. This is what you got to say to folks. It'll stop them right there. They'll listen, they'll drop all of their rocks. They'll drop all of their negativity. They'll drop all of that stuff because you anointed. But you ain't just saying these, just throwing words out there. I and mean, then you believe this. The minute you believe it, the anointing is activated. Hello, somebody. Hey, man. Come on, somebody. The minute you believe this, the anointing that breaks the yokes is activated. Now, the word is anointed. But for the word to become reality and change your life, you've got to accept it. You've got to release faith in it. And boom, the anointing is released. The power to get it done is released in your life. It's just that simple. Now you start praising and thanking God for the end result, man, you start speeding through the process. All right, look at this here. For whom he did predestinate, them he also called. He, for them he did predestinate to conform to the image of Jesus Christ, them he also called, and who he called, them he also justified. He literally said, I oh, listen, I vouched for them. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Yo, hello, glorified person. You've been glorified by God. Wait till we break down that word glorified. Because you got to know what you are in order to allow your mind to be renewed so that you can start speaking and flowing the way God wants you to flow and speak. When it comes to sickness and disease, God says, no, I haven't given you those. Those are attacks from the devil. I've given you health. Claim your health. Claim your health. Then tell God, God manifested in my physical body, manifested in my life. Glory to God. Now, according to your faith, things are going to start happening. Now, you may get it instantaneously. You may have to go to the doctors. You may have to take pharmaceuticals. You may have to do holistic treatment, but you're going to get that healing. But you got, listen, building strong faith is not a when you have a situation, you start building strong. you starting to build strong faith right now. you building great faith right now. Great confidence, great conviction, great persuasion and God's ability to do their work. You got to start role playing. You got to start seeing yourself with the blessing of God, seeing yourself with the promise of God manifesting in your life. You got to start talking to some mountains. You start, you got to start releasing your faith because God said, whosoever shall say to the mountain, be removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he say will come to pass. He shall have whatever he says. That's Mark 11, 23, 24. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. Now, that's process. But there's formula, there's process, then there's the outcome. And, and if you're confused on that, I'm glad you tuned in because we're going to unconfuse you on that. I can't believe for you. God can't believe for you. But we can put enough evidence in front of you from the scriptures, from the word, that you can make a decision to say, okay, God, I trust you. I'm going to believe you. But give, excuse me, I don't I mean to yell. I'm sorry. Give God a situation that God 
can prove that they mean what they say. Show God that you renewed your mind. Show God how. Show God you renewed your mind by what you say and what you do. You can tell God all night, all day, God, my mind is renewed. I hear the Bible every day. But until your mouth and the words you speak change and line up with God's word, you don't heard what it takes to get it done, but you ain't doing it. Now, I ain't trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be rough. I'm not trying to be insensitive. But the acid test of you and I renewing our mind, we're going to change what we think and we're going to change what we say and we're going to change how we act. And all of that is going to change your feelings. I don't care if through those three processes right there, those three steps right there, those three formula ingredients right there, you don't feel like it makes sense. You don't feel, it just feels weird and unnatural. It doesn't matter, but that's what, that's how Jesus got down. And you will get used to it. You will get used to it. But you have to keep saying it and you got to keep believing it. You got to tell God, God, I'm going to believe it. Listen, even when you got doubtful thoughts all in your mind, you got you to say, no, I'm not, I'm not a doubter. I'm a believer. God, thank you. Not my will be done, thy will be done. All right, look at this here. Verse 31. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? What? Really? Who shall lay anything, verse 33, to God's elect? It's God that justifies. Look at this here. Let, let me jump back down because I can be going to go back up. So he goes on and says, what shall separate us? And we went through verse 35, 36. Nay, and anything that the devil attacks you with, and all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Listen, listen, you are more than conqueror. You got to change your thinking. I got to change my thought. I got to keep my thinking changed. I got to keep my thinking renewed. Because just because you renew your mind on Sunday doesn't mean that your mind is still functional and your mouth is functional and your, and your thinking is functional on Monday and Tuesday, and especially in the midst of an attack. You may learn the scripture on Sunday, but now Monday's coming or Sunday night. That devil may get at you quick. He just want to see if you really, really renewed your mind and believe what you renewed your mind to. And the acid test that you believe what God has said in his word is that when that devil comes to attack you and tries to pull that word out your heart, you respond to that devil in the name of Jesus and you say, no, you don't. I am the head and not the tail in Jesus name. I believe it. That's it. And God is and has worked this thing out. You say, what do you mean is and has? Has is eternal perspective. Is is earthly perspective. He has worked it out. It's already done in eternity. He is working it out. That means in time, God has taken us through the process, taking us through the steps. We got to apply the formula that Jesus rocked and, and, and obviously made strong and made available to us and showed us how to do it. We got to put that formula into work and we got to now thank God and believe, us, believe through the process. Now, real quick, I want to go back. I want to, I want to, I want to deal with some things that we was dealing with, some final thoughts, and then we're going to go in and we're going to jump into breaking down maybe a word or two. Maybe a word or two. We, we're going we're gonna to jump right into the nitty gritty verse, which is all things work together for the good. We're going to break that verse down. All right. So first of all, before we do, you need to understand that God's destiny for our lives has already been predetermined. God says, listen, I've already predetermined that you're going to do it like Jesus. You're going to look like Jesus when you come through it and come out of it. And you're going to be exactly, you're going to have the same results Jesus had. Victory. Yeah. Yeah. Look at this here. We must find out what God or Elohim has predestined for us. The Bible is full of promises. It is full of declarations from Almighty God of how your life is supposed to be. Now, I'm not so much talking about that you're going to be a lawyer or a doctor or a nurse or whatever. But I'm talking about whatever you choose in life that you're going to be victorious in it. That you're going to be the head and not the tail of it. People are going to be pushing you around and pushing you over and, and robbing you and, and taking advantage of you. Not when you introduce Jesus into your situation. Not when you, not when you introduce, glory to God, the anointing of God and, and the rod of God into your situation. Okay? Look at this here. Um, th when we start talking about God, God's perspective is always eternal. Okay? No matter how bad the situation looks, no matter what's going on in your life, God always sees it as done. 
We got to get our minds renewed to begin to speak in time, to speak in the midst of our situations the way God does. Got to renew your mind. I got to keep mine renewed. If you ever get around me and I'm talking like opposite the Bible, check me. So, yo, I rebuke you right now and get your mind right. Get your mind back to thinking and, and talking like Jesus. All right. Look at this here. From God. OK. God's perspective, again, is eternal, even though they see our experiences in the now. They see what's going on in the now and they know I'm talking about in time and they know it's real. But God says, look, even though they see our our, our experiences that we're going through in the now, whether good or bad, they still give the, the formula through the word of God. They, they've spoken the, the, the word of God, but they've spoken the formula. No matter, no matter if your situation right now is good or bad, God sees it in eternity and he also sees it in now, in the time now, he's given us the Holy Spirit. You got a Holy Ghost, you got a Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit now begins to work with us to get us to help us change our reality in time to their reality in eternity. Their reality in eternity, okay, things happen immediately. As soon as God speaks it, it happens immediately. It becomes established. Now, every promise is already established. So in eternity, it's already done. But in time, God says, I see where you are. I know what, how many more steps you got to make. I see what kind of faith that you're developing. God says, keep moving in that direction. Keep strengthening your faith. Keep renewing your mind. Keep speaking my word because now the angels can get involved. The Holy Spirit is involved. And be in the process of time, that, that circumstance is going to change. And it's going to be and manifest exactly what I promised it would be and manifest because I predetermined it. I predestined it. What did he predestine? He predestined that every outcome of victory belongs to you if you and I, if we find out the formula and go through the process with strong and great faith, trusting God, doing it just like Jesus did. And as we begin to study the word of God and renew our mind, to think on that level, like Jesus said, think on these things, nothing's going to stop you. Nothing's going to shake your cage and rattle your cage. Nothing's going to put fear in your heart. Nothing's going to cause you to and dissuade you and cause you to be dismayed. Nothing that the devil's got. Okay, look at this here. Now, they've given us formula. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, full of the formulas of Jesus. Full of the formulas as Jesus was kicking them formulas out in all of the processes that the devil was throwing at him to try to bring him to defeat. And you know that devil been throwing a lot of processes at us to throw us into a level of defeat and depression and, and discouragement. But we going back to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we going to look at how Jesus did this thing, how he handled the devil, how he handled negative circumstances, and how he talked to the Father God, and how he released the Spirit of God through his words. We doing the same thing because he says you're going to do the same thing that you see me do, but only greater. So watch this here. We must believe. Listen to me. Listen to me. Faith is so important with this. Here. We must believe even if it doesn't look like it's possible. We dealt with Romans chapter four. We ain't going to go all the way back there with Abraham, 100 years old, have a son. OK, watch this here. We must renew our minds to think, talk respond to the attacks of the devil to do and to have like Jesus, just like God said. I'm telling you, this is some high level faith right here, but this has been available to us since Jesus came. At the, as soon as the last days began, you know, remember Hebrew says that the last days started when Jesus started preaching to us. So when Jesus was born, that started this time frame, that started the clock of God called last days and he's soon to return the day of the lord is coming okay so look at this here now i want us to drop down to verse 28 can you go to 20, 28 verse 28 and we know that all things all things all all things the devil can throw at you all things work together for the good to them that love god to them who are the called according to his purpose all things, all things that God has promised you is working together for your good. It is working. God is working. God's working for you. I, I said, God is working for you. 
He working for me, he working for you. God working for us. I, oh, hallelujah. Lord, I believe that. Lord, I believe that right now. I believe you are working for us right now. Look at this here. Let's break down a quick word. My time is almost gone, okay? First of all, first of all, you need to understand this here, okay? You got to know this. This ain't something that you can kind of like, well, uh, you know, uh, I know it, but I don't know if I believe it or not. I, I don't know if it's true or not. You, no, you got to get past that. You got to get past that and take God at his word. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit right now. You got to take the Holy Spirit as well. The Holy Spirit reveals something to you. If somebody comes to you and busts a verse on you, you need to just believe that. Say, okay, God, help me. I need your help to believe this. God, God, God's not offended when we talk like that. Heck, I used to talk like that for years. But some of the stuff that I was reading, I was like, this is too good to be true. But I chose to believe it. You got to choose to believe it. The father says, you, you got to believe what I say. You got to believe what's in my mind, what's in my heart. You got to believe what Jesus has spoke. You got to believe what the Holy Spirit can do. All right, watch this here. Watch this here. You got to know this. What I'm about to say, you got to know this. You can't be struggling with this. You got to know this. You ready? This is, I'm talking about the promises of God, the power of God. I'm talking about the preordained will of God for you to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ, for you to do it just like Jesus, you got to know that this works on stress. This is the answer to stress. This is the answer to the unknown in your life. What? Doing it like Jesus. You got to know that this promise, this predestination to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. In other words, God says to think like Jesus, to talk like Jesus, to behave like Jesus, and to have the victory like Jesus. This is the answer to difficulties. This is the answer to depression. This is the answer to dissatisfaction. This is the answer to disappointing and exhausting things in your life. This is the answer. Not drugs, not alcohol, not crazy relationships, not wilding out, not cussing people out. This is the answer. And we know this. We know that all things work together for the good. The word no, I'm just going to break that down and then we're going to be done for tonight. This word no. You ready for this? You ready for this? I didn't make this up. I, I discovered this and got me all kind of excited. The word no there, for this we know. And we know that all things work together. And we know, in other words, it's the Greek word edo. I-D-O. I'm going to play with it. It's the Greek word, I do. You can say Edo or I do. Look at this here. This is what it means. You ready for this? This is some powerful stuff. To know means, watch this here. To see properly. It also means to be aware of. It means to consider. It means to perceive. It means to be sure. This we know. It also means to tell. This we tell. It also means to understand. And then lastly, it means to wish. That's the Greek. Now, from the Hebrew, the Hebrew comparative of it, listen to this. This, you got to know this. You got to know that, that what God has predained preordained and predestined that's predestined and, and ordained together predained <laughs> okay that was childish all right what god has preord preordained and predestined in your life you got to know it i got to come to a place where i know it that means we got to get some information then we got to we got to renew our minds to that information then we got to accept that information then we got to release our faith in that information. Then we got to think it and talk it and behave it and all of that. We got to put it into action. All right, look at this here. The Hebrew, and then I close with this here. In other words, in the Hebrew, now watch how the Hebrew gets into a little bit more detail than the Greek. And then we're going to pick up here next time. And we're going to break it all down. I thank God that we have both. Both languages are conveying the same truth. One does it in like a short snippet and the other takes its time and breaks it down. Watch this here. This is what God says. God says, you got to know this. You got to, you got to, I do this. You got to eat all this. In other words, you got to see it. To know means to see. 
You start tasting and seeing that the Lord is good. You start tasting, you're going to start seeing. Look at this here. To perceive with the eyes, God says, when I get done with you, you're going to see this with your own eyes. Right now, you was blind in some things in God. I'm blind in some things in God. But when God opens our eyes, we're going to say like that guy that was blind for real in the physical. I once was blind, but now I see. We seeing spiritually right now. We seeing truth right now. We're not getting man-made ideas. This is what these words mean. Look at this here. To perceive by any of the senses. God says, listen, when I get done with you, <laughs> all of your senses going to know I'm God and that I can do and I have done what I promised what you have believed me to do. Look at this here. To perceive, notice, discern, and discover. This is what it means to know. God says, you need to know that all things work together for your good. Look at this here. It means to turn the eyes, to turn the mind, to turn the attention to anything, and we're going to put to God. You, do, you, you make the decision to turn your mind, your attention, and your eyes to God, things is going to start happening. And I'm talking about the promises is going to start happening in your life. The promises are happening in our lives. Look at this here. To pay attention, to observe. Yeah, you observing and paying more attention to God than ever before. Yeah, because you're renewing your mind. Because you're getting to know some things about God. You're getting to know some things about what God has promised. You're getting to know some things about how God does things. Look at this here. Look at this here. To see about something. To ascertain what must be done about it. Huh? I didn't know this until I started studying this and breaking these words down. So in other words, God says, I have preordained you to conform to the image of Jesus Christ. So when I get done with you, you are going to not only pay attention and observe the things that's going on in your life, but you're going to get the answers. You are going to now, you are going to now see about some things. You're going to start dealing with some things and you're going to ascertain what must be done about it. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to say, wait a minute, what's going on here? What's happening here? Don't that sound like King David? He come down there and the giants out there talking all this junk. And he says, hey, wait, what's going on here? Who's this uncircumcised Philistine? talking all this junk and defying the God that we serve by defying the people of God. I'm telling you, there's a mindset change happening in you and me right now. There's an attitude change, and it's for the glory of God. We're starting to think more like Jesus, act more like Jesus. You have to explain this to people. People don't know, what's going on with you? You don't change. You just say, no, I, 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 yeah, I have. I've renewed my mind, and I'm starting to think and talk like Jesus. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Th this gets good. All right, I'm going to stop here. I'm going to stop here. Because they're gone. There's like 15 more of these guys. I do. Well, Edo, we're going to start here next time. Oh, my God. I, listen, everything, everything, everything that God has spoken about concerning your life and concerning you conforming to the image of Jesus Christ is in process right now. You are, I'm telling you, you've taken on supernatural capabilities. You've taken on God-helping individuals. In, uh, abilities, God intervening in abilities in your life. I'm telling you, you change it. You conforming to the image of Jesus Christ. You are undergoing the process, the transformation, the metamorphosis of, of, of carnality to spirituality, of fleshly living to spiritual living, of, of doing it your way to finding out how to do it God's way. Well, my time is all gone. I'm Apostle Edward B. Haynes, Resurrection Life Christian Center Church International in Hartford. I'm telling you right now, listen, you don't want to miss, you don't want to miss next service at, at Res Life. We, 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 I know all this COVID and all this stuff is going on, but I'm telling you right now, we anointed. I'm telling you, we praying that folks get, 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 get healed and delivered. We laying hands on the sick and we, we watching them recover in the name of Jesus. We walking in the anointing and the covering of Almighty God, and we doing everything that the CDC has said. We wearing our masks. Don't come, don't, don't even come thinking you're gonna come in there without a mask. And don't even come thinking you're gonna be all up in people's face. No, we're gonna respect, we're gonna respect what, what, what they saying, you know what I mean? But we done added something to it. Yeah, we add, we adding great faith and we adding to all of the CDC's recommendations, we adding to it great faith in God. Hallelujah. So come on, let's let's close this out right now. I need you to send this to a friend that you think would, would benefit and get encouraged by this and get inspired and, and get stirred up by this.
Yeah, come on, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you and praise you and magnify your holy and majestic name. And thank you for touching my brother, touching my sister in Christ. Touch the, those folks that they have not made that decision to make that decision. The Lord God, get under that covering and make you their shepherd. And we just glorify you right now and thank you for hearing and answering our prayers. Now, if, you, if you're here and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, you need to do that right now. You need to make that official. So say these words after me. Father, I repent of my sins. And right now I turn to Jesus. Jesus, come into my life. Take control. I believe God raised you from the dead. You're alive right now. And I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Now, Father, these things I pray, according to the book of Romans, chapter 10. If I will confess Jesus as my Lord and Savior and believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead, I would be saved. I receive it now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hey, those of you that just prayed that prayer, it's just that simple. It's about believing. You got to get the right information, then just believe it. And God, he sees that and, and he puts righteousness in your account, so to speak. But he makes you righteousness, the righteousness of God. He makes you right with God because of your faith in Jesus Christ. Hey, check out the description box. We'll give you some information on how to get in contact with us. And we want to contact you and be in contact with you so we can help you grow and get rooted and grounded in your relationship with Almighty God. All right. God bless you, everybody. Hey, until the next time we get together, stay blessed, get stronger in your faith, and Pete, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, pull out them formulas and them promises in Jesus' name. Again, I'm Apostle Edward B. Haynes, Resurrection Life Christian Center Church International here in Hartford, Connecticut. God bless you. Shalom.